Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Roswheel 3-in-1 Bike Pannier. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO87. So, what are these? This is a pannier set that has two separate distinct physical portions. Um, The base portion drapes over your rear cargo rack and then it has one bag on each side of the rack that kind of, um, so it's, it's one continuous piece of fabric that has like two bag units built into it. Um, it attaches to the rack with some plastic buckles at the top, and then it also has some hook and loop straps on the sides of the rack that just hold those bags from like flapping around too much. So that's the first physical portion. Uh, then there is also a detachable portion that is a third bag, um, and that rests on top of the base portion. It attaches to it uh, to the base via some plastic buckles, and then it also has a strap that can be used like to secure it around your seat tube so that it doesn't like slide backwards off of your uh, rear cargo rack or anything like that. For price, I have been seeing this pannier going for around forty to fifty dollars. Um, it doesn't appear to be listed on Roswheel's own website anymore. I think it must be like discontinued uh, product. It also like is a very different style than any of the stuff that they have on their website currently. So I'm not sure exactly what's up with that. Um, but yeah, it's it's still being sold through retailers like Amazon or Walmart or whatever um, for around forty to fifty dollars. All right, so volume. Uh, these panniers, um, this this whole set in total uh, can carry about thirty seven liters of stuff. Um, that's pretty good, uh, though. That does include the detachable unit on the top of the rack. So like, you won't really be able to add any more capacity by like buying another bag and you know putting that on top of the rack um also because this 37 liters is like spread across five different compartments we'll talk more about that in the next section um none of the individual compartments is terribly large so if you've got like really large art items that you want to haul uh the these panniers might not work for that so this brings us to versatility. This these these panniers do pretty well in this department. Um, so because they've got multiple compartments, it means that it's pretty easy to organize your stuff. Um, when I use these on a daily basis, I had like a whole system for exactly where each thing in my minimum viable setup goes. So you know I have this collection of items that like um, that I always have with me on a daily basis, and each one of those items had a particular spot. Uh, where they, you know, always went. Um, So I always knew where to find them. The detachable portion of this pannier set is pretty much the perfect size to become like a single strap day pack. Um, The detachable portion is also the right size to fit like a laptop in. So I was able to just, you know, use it during my normal work days. Um, What I would do is uh, like I would... Um, keep all of the stuff that I knew that I was going to need for just my bike um, in the base portion and then the stuff that I was going to need once I got to my destination and I left my bike behind I would put all that in the detachable portion so then when I get to the destination I just detach the detachable portion take it with me and then leave the base portion on the cargo rack Um, and I did that because like the the base portion while it does have a handle on top for carrying um it's it's really like big and bulky and like you know you're carrying this thing around trying to pretend like it's like this briefcase but it's like it's just this really big bulky um double-sided bag and you know you kind of you look really ridiculous carrying that around One major drawback uh, is that, like, it is impossible to use the detachable portion of this pannier set without the base portion already on the cargo rack. Um, So, like, you know, even though most days I didn't feel like I needed the base portion at all, and I would rather be using the detachable portion because that's kind of the more, like, reasonably sized bag that is easy to carry with me once I get to my destination. The only way to attach 
the detachable portion to my bike is to have the base portion on there and then put the detachable portion on top or just like stow it in one of the, the bags of the base part. Water resistance. So this is something that I didn't really have in mind when I first started like looking around for panniers for, for my bike. Um, the Roswell three in one, eh, it does all right. Um, the, the part of the base portion of this pannier set that like faces towards your wheel. So if, if it's draped over your cargo, uh, rack, the, the bottom part of that fabric that like, you know, would be near the wheel that this wheel can splash up onto. Um, that's made of this nice, like thick, uh, waterproof material, but then like the rest of the bag is just kind of this normal, like backpack fabric material. Um, and so, yeah, it, it does okay at like keeping stuff inside, you know, kind of dry, but like not if it's actively raining. Like if you, if you've biked around on a rainy day, like, you know, everything that can possibly get wet is going to get wet. Um, and so like I used to ride around with just like, like I constantly always had plastic shopping bags just like rolled up in the bottom of my panniers so that like, if it started drizzling at all, I would like take those out and like wrap everything that I had in my, in my panniers in plastic, including like, you know, I would always have my laptop with me because like, where am I going? I'm going to and from work. Uh, and so like, that's definitely not something that you want to let it get wet at all. Um, so yeah, this, um, they're, they're not like, it, it, it's a huge drawback because it, it means that I can't use these panniers, uh, in every situation. And like you leave in the morning and do you really know whether it's going to start raining or not? you know, you can check the forecast, but like, that's never for sure. Um, I've, I've gotten trapped out there. Uh, I've gotten caught in the rain, uh, unexpectedly with these panniers and like had to panic stop at my parents' house on the way home to like, you know, grab some more plastic bags because I didn't have enough. So that's definitely uh, a point against these panniers. I never lost, um, my laptop to water, but I did, have an external battery once that got waterlogged and didn't work afterwards. So that was, um, you know, that was a good $50 piece of equipment that I had to replace. All right. Durability. That's def this is definitely an important, uh, point for, you know, equipment. Um, so the durability of, of these panniers is pretty decent considering the price. Um, it, it's not really up to snuff to like using these every day uh, and, you know, expecting them to last for years. Um, the, the hook and loop uh, straps that kind of hold it to your rack definitely go first. Um, they, they lost their ability to like hold a grip on the, on themselves. Um, and that's not like the end of the world because those straps, honestly, like they're just holding the bags to the sides of your rack and like really that's gravity does that job anyway so it's not uh it's not really the end of the world and i suppose i probably could just buy some new sections of like you know loop strip so that uh you know you could sew that onto the 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 strap and and get that grippiness back um but like i don't really care that much um, the bags themselves, especially like the the main compartments of the base portion, have developed quite a few holes, um, especially like near the corners where, uh, you know, if I if I put my laptop into the bag uh, most days, like this is exactly where the my lap like and so I, I carry around macbooks because that's what the um school district gives us and of course macbooks have like very sharp corners and uh so that that poked through uh the corners of of the bags after um i don't know a year year and a half of having these um so it's it's not it's not to the point where like I would be really worried about stuff falling out um, of the bags, but it definitely compromises what little like water protection um, they provided in the first place. All right, visibility. So um, this is 
something that people definitely look for in in panniers because like just about every every surface that you have on your bike like you know you kind of want it to help uh make you more visible uh out on the road um some of the the straps on these bags have reflective little bits but that's not they're, they're not very large um they do however have big giant reflective logos on the sides of the uh base portion bags so um this would be visible to someone who's approaching your bike from the sides um, but if they're approaching you from the front or the back they would not uh, see this reflective portion um, and then other than that like the bags are just completely black or i think there is an army green variant that you can get um, and those are both pretty like low profile colors so um, other than those little reflective bits and the big logo like don't expect this to really help people to notice you so, yeah, um, would I buy these panniers again? Probably not. Um, if you know that you're only going to be riding your bike in, like, fair weather and you're not going to be, um, like, putting these bags through, like, a whole lot of strain, you're not going to be using them, like, every single day, um, this could be a pretty good option for you. Um, but uh, but if you're, like, yeah, a daily commuter, um, I don't think that these would really cut it. Um, and I think that, like, Roswell also has realized that because, uh, like I said earlier, I can't find these... Th- um, this particular bag anywhere on their website and like everything that they now sell on their website or at least that they list on their website is like a completely different style it's like all kind of like like it looks more like camping oriented you know bike touring super waterproof like really serious looking stuff um and these are kind of you know more like it's like a day pack Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Uh, This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which again is thenexus.tv slash SO87. Come back next week to hear about uh, the pannier set that I replaced uh, the Roswell 3-in-1 with uh, and that I've been using for uh, the last year. If you uh, have a set of panniers that you really like uh, and you want to tell us about it, um, please go to our subreddit to chat with other listeners at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make uh, technology-focused podcasts, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. convergence. Technology is ever-evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why, every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.